Have you ever wondered what your soil texture is like? In this video I'm going to show you a very simple way to get a good idea of what your soil texture is like. Now there's three ways to measure texture. One is that you could take a soil sample and send it off to a lab and they'd be quite happy to do the work for you. And this might be a good idea if you have a large market garden or you're a farmer. But if you're the average gardener, you don't really need the information that accurate. And I wouldn't bother with a professional soil test. Not for texture. The second option is to do the procedures I'm going to show you in this video. They're very simple. They require no equipment and anyone can do them. The third option is to use the jar method. And I've done a separate video on how to do that. At the end of this video, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to my other video that will tell you all about soil texture and how to do the jar test. It is more accurate than the things I'm going to show you in this video. So what is soil texture? Well, it's really a measure of how much sand, silt, and clay you have in your soil. It's really that simple. Now let's go and collect some soil samples and try and figure out what my soil is like in this garden. I've collected three soil samples from my property. This middle one is what I have in most of my gardens. So all my flower beds really are made out of this kind of soil. And it's pretty standard for this area. This is kind of a unique soil. It turns out that my property has a sand vein that runs through it. Uh, the sand vein is about eight feet wide and it runs diagonally through the property, over the hill, down the other side, through my vegetable bed, and I actually follow where this is. So this is natural. This isn't a man-made pile of sand that someone dumped here. But the texture is very different. You can tell right away as soon as you put a shovel into it. And this sample is taken from my sugar bush. So I have an area that has had sugar maples and beech trees growing for a long time. It's never been cultivated. No one's ever farmed the land and the soil there is really nice and humusy and I thought we'd have a look at that too. Now if we have a look at the soil samples the color tells you a lot about the soil. The one on the left is the sandy soil and you can see the light color. There's not a lot of humus in there, a lot a lot of organic matter and the extra sand ends up giving you a soil that looks very light in color. The middle one just by looking at it I would guess has more clay which tends to darken the soil and it has more organic matter which also darkens it. The soil on the right is quite dark and that's a good indicator of lots of organic matter. The other thing is if you have a close look at it and just feel it, it feels really soft and crumbly. Again that's an indication of a lot of organic matter. Before we can do much with this soil, what we have to do is clean it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take the soil, put it in the palm of my hand, any chunks I'll squish so that they get smaller, and all of the little stones should be taken out. They're going to interfere with the next steps in this test. Any roots that you find, any plant material, take those out too. So I'm going to do that with each of these soils. The first test you can do with your soil is do a sniff test. See what the soil smells like. Now I don't notice a lot of difference in the smell and there really aren't any strong odors. What you want to look for is soil that smells either acidic or sour, smells like something is rotting in there. That indicates a soil that's far too wet and has very low microbial activity. And none of these soils seem to have that. They all smell pretty nice. The next thing to do is field test. Take some of the soil. Now these are fairly dry so take a bit of water and wet them and just rub them between your fingers. Close your eyes so you can really feel what's going on with the soil. This one's quite gritty and I can feel the large pieces of sand in here. But it's not all sand. 
You can see with that water, we're making a bit of mud here. So it's certainly not totally sand, but I can feel that sand. When I rub on here, I can feel it, and I can also hear it. So this is my garden soil. Now I can still feel a bit of sand in here, but very little. Most of this feels quite soft. It's not particularly sticky. So if you have a lot of clay in your soil, then this would be quite sticky. But I just feel a lot of smoothness here. So I think I'm feeling a lot of silt. Silt feels like talcum powder, so it's very, very fine. But I have a fair amount of sand too. And this feels pretty much like the middle one here. But you can see how much darker it is. I can still feel some sand, but it's pretty smooth. So this is a very rough measure of the kind of soil you might have. None of these are pure sand. There's certainly sand in all of them. This has more sand than the other two because you, you can actually feel that it's mostly sand. But there's also silt and clay in these others. It's time to try a ball test. So what you want to do is take a, a good amount of soil and add a bit of water. And I'm adding the water because this soil is fairly dry here. If your soil is wet already, you don't have to add the water. And now it's time to make pancakes. After you've kneaded the soil a little bit, try to form a ball and see if it forms a ball that stays there. If this was pure sand, you wouldn't be able to do that. It wouldn't keep its shape. So this tells me that there's at least some clay in here. The next thing to do is to see how stable this ball is. And some people take it and drop it on the ground, or you can just play with it a bit, see how easy it breaks apart. And this breaks apart fairly easily. Now, if I do the same thing with my normal garden soil, pretty easy to form a ball, it stays there, but when I press on it, it's much harder to break apart. And in fact, as you press on it, it deforms instead of breaking apart, so it changes the shape a little bit. This tells you that there's a fair amount of clay in here. The more tightly this stays together, the more clay there is. If this was a really heavy clay soil, then you'd have a hard time breaking it apart. This is the soil from the woods, and I expect it to be very similar to this second one, except that it has more humus in it. Again, it's pretty easy to make a ball, and it's pretty tough. In fact, it's, it's breaking apart less than the second one. Now, if I put this one back here, take this one, you can again see the difference in color. This is my sandy soil, this is my garden soil, and this is from the wooded area. And I know it has the most organic material because it's really strongly aggregated. Now the third test you can do is called the ribbon test. So step one is to start with a wetted ball like this. You want to knead it really well. You want that water inside, but you don't want it dripping wet. When you squeeze this, you shouldn't see water coming out. But it should feel like it's damp. Mix it up really good. Get that water throughout the soil sample. And now roll it into kind of a sausage. Hold it in the palm of your hand or just laying on the fingers. And you're going to use this part of your forefinger and your thumb. And what you want to do is just kind of press it out here. And this is what's called the ribbon. You want to see how big of a ribbon you can make. So my ribbons are about an inch long, maybe a bit more than that. And this does take a bit of practice. As a new gardener and you're doing this for the first time, you have to do it several times to kind of get the feel for it. The size of the ribbon gives you an idea of what's in the soil. We're going to try the sandy one and have a look at that and compare it. 
and start making your ribbon. Now you can see that the ribbon here isn't even a half inch long. As soon as I squeeze it, it pretty much falls apart. Again, do several just so that you get an average value for you, what you're doing. And if there's any little stones in here, they'll break the ribbon. That's why we have to take them off in the first place. That's a little longer. Let's see, as soon as I press on it, it starts breaking apart. It doesn't really form much of a ribbon. You can already see cracks here. The shorter the ribbon, the more sand you have in it. The longer the ribbon, the more clay you have. If you get a ribbon that's about two inches, that'll tell you that you have over 20% clay. If you have 50% clay, you'll be able to make a nice long ribbon that's several inches long. Sand, on the other hand, makes very short ribbons. So these tasks are a bit crude. They don't really give you much of a number. I don't know what percent of sand I have, but I have a rough guide that this sample here has a fair amount of sand, certainly more than this other area in my garden. This area has more clay, and for most gardeners, that's actually accurate enough. Now, if you want more accuracy, there's another test that you can do. It doesn't require any equipment. It's pretty easy to do, and it's called the jar test. And I've made a separate video about the jar test. And I'll put a link in the top right-hand corner to that video. If you believe that soil is important for growing great plants, you'll love my book called Soil Science for Gardeners. In it, I discuss all aspects of soil, including its chemical and physical characteristics, the importance of bacteria and fungi, and the impact that the rhizosphere has on plant health. I'll help you evaluate your soil to identify any problems and provide solutions to solve them. Learn about drainage, compaction, aggregation, and the right level of organic matter. In the process, I'll debunk a number of soil myths so you don't harm your soil. Soil Science for Gardeners even includes a personalized soil assessment and improvement plan. Before you buy any more products to fertilize or improve your soil, you owe it to yourself to read this book. Knowing the right things to do in the garden can save you hundreds of dollars. To find out more, click on the image of the book.